Welcome back to my Catalina 27 channel. Just thought I'd spend a few minutes here going over all the things I've done on the boat before I really start filming, get this channel pretty much current. Um, I knew the decks weren't soft and the keel attachment was sound and the engine turned freely. Those were really my only concerns before I bought the boat because I know that a 37 year old boat needs pretty much every component, bow to stern, keel to masthead, either clean, inspected and refitted or replaced all together. Mine's an 84 model and it came with a universal M18 two cylinder diesel. It turned over and had compression, but it wouldn't start. But it's a diesel, it had compression, so it's gotta be a fuel issue. So I pulled the injection pump off and right away I could see that the cam followers were stuck in the bores. Not a big deal. So I took it all apart carefully. I consulted a manual that I found online. I don't, I can't find the link again though, so I can't link it, but I just sanded them down with some 3000 grit sandpaper, smoothed the bore out with a valve grinding compound and the 3000 grit finishing foam back sandpaper that I found at the auto parts store and just cleaned the crap out of it. Soaked everything in carb cleaner. It was a little bit gummed up, but clean right up. It's not a, it's not really a difficult job. Just got to be uh, careful you put everything back the way it came out. And the manual said it should just, the control rod should just fall like that. And it did. So I cleaned all the surfaces off and put it back in, hooked the lines up, replaced the gaskets on the injectors. At the very bottom, there's little copper gaskets in there and cranked it over. Voila, starts right up. Idles ran like a champ. Gotta love those Japanese motors from the 80s, from the 70s and 80s. It's not the use of the orange RTV that kills me, but I think James May said it best. Look at it. I mean, that looks like it was done with a knife and fork by the council. It's not square, it's not neat, he's wasted material, he's left sharp edges, it's all bent. I cannot conceive of the mind of a man who would look at that and think that was the right way to do it. Needless to say, I bought a new one. Next, I addressed the known and well-documented issue of the alternator bracket mounting to the timing cover on that little ear right there. And without warning, some of them break, sending the alternator into the oil filter and dumping all the oil into the bilge without any warning. Here's the old bracket. As you can see where it mounts right to the timing cover there, Westerbeek who owns Universal now, has come out with a new bracket, and that's available at Catalina Direct as a kit. I think it's like 270 bucks. It's not the best design I've ever seen, but it seems to work. And there it is installed. I also added a dedicated ground, just for insurance. And then on to the fuel tank, which was not too bad considering. So I got some wire chain just some cheap wire chain poured some clean diesel down there put the chain in the tank and just shook it for like an hour or two hours until the fuel poured out clean and yeah it looks all right any residuals will be caught in the first uh, couple tanks with the filter and i'll change those out after an hour or two of running keep an eye on them and it looks like water pump boy struck again here with the wiring for the sending unit which wasn't working so I bought a new Bosch unit and put that in there and redid the wires came out all right it was about 30 bucks the cross piece however was a bit wob wobbly so I had to drill out the holes in the top piece so that the screws actually pulled the cross piece down and tight <laughs> and fitted some new rubber, put that in there, and it looks pretty good. Next, I went after the keel, Catalina Smile issue, which mine didn't have, but I just checked all the pertinent literature. Thank you, Jerry Douglas, for making all these drawings and repair advice. 
So mine were okay, so I just torqued them down and cleaned and painted the bilge, fitted a new switch, and then on to the chain plates. Just checked them, pulled them out, check them for corrosion, crevice corrosion through the uh, hole, hole in the deck, sorry, which was pretty dry. It had leaked at one point and had blackened out the wood on the, on the uh, bulkhead. I took some turpentine, some bronze bull, and scrubbed them out and re-oiled them. I'll show you in another video. They came out great, not a problem. So I acid washed the chain plates and re-bedded them with some 3M 4000 UV polyurethane. And then I went into the steering system and the idler pulley plate was rusted out. If you have a boat that has wheel steering, you need to check this because it's just mild steel. They don't last forever down there. So I pulled that all out, cleaned the entire area down there and painted it. And uh, yeah, they didn't use tep gel or anything when they put the screws on for the pedestal. <coughs> so that was a lot of fun getting that off, but not nearly as much fun as having to cut the bolt off to get the quadrant off the rudder shaft. That didn't take days, don't worry, with a hacksaw blade. But I got it off, cleaned it all up, and uh, yeah, here's the ferrous metal clamps they used on the steering cables, which uh, were galvanized metal. And, yeah, you gotta drop the rudder to get that out. So I cleaned it all up, sanded it down, cleaned the stuffing box for the rudder shaft, and then just painted it with some uh, Duplicolor wheel paint, which works really well. It's easy to spray, comes out nice. Redid the stuffing box. There's the new aluminum base. Idler pulley plate, which is a much improved design. I got new clamps and new thimbles and new stainless seven by 19 wire. Some new screws, which I had to order from Edson and some new uh, engine control cables. So I crimped on the new wire to the old chain, which cleaned up nice. And I went on the website which, of Edson's website and went through all their instructions for rebuilding the pedestal, which was pretty straightforward. Came out nice. My brake was in good shape, so I left that. And uh, onto the rudder shaft, which had a, quite a bit of play. And you can just see at the top of the picture here, that was the play I had to take up. So I looked up as much information as I could find. So I decided to build it. Oops, I'll show you. I built a dam around it and pulled the shaft out, cleaned it all up. And then I waxed it with three coats of wax and stuck it back in there and built me a little dam, mixed, mixed up some West Systems epoxy. I didn't put any graphite in there. I just poured the epoxy, raw epoxy down there and let it go all the way out the bottom. And I did that at the top here and then where the stuffing box goes as well. And poured it in there, let it go off until it was, I don't know, I think it was like two hours, three hours. And it felt pretty hard, and they say to uh, break it loose after that before it completely goes off. And the wax let it go. So I pulled it out. And uh, there's other ways to do this. It looks like Jerry Douglas used uh, some mylar strips to film to put down in there and take up the gap. And Catalina Direct sells a little kit that they pretty much do what I do, but they drill holes in it. Then, uh, yeah, getting the prop off was near impossible. I had to actually cut it to release it. And yeah, that was a pain in the ass. I have to get a new prop. I had to cut the cutlass bearing out as well, because that would not come out. I put some little dings in there, but I, I don't think it's going to affect it. So I put a new one in, and I made sure I put some set screws on there. The stuffing box for the prop shaft looks like it had never been serviced. That was just like paste. So yeah, that was nice to find. So I took that all off, 
cleaned it up and reinstalled it after I cleaned the shaft, obviously. And I bought a new coupling while I was in there, and that's a split coupling from, from that company. I can't even attempt to say that. Incredibly, I found a 1310 right hand three bladed prop, which should work just perfectly. And there's the set screws I used on the uh, cutlass bearing. And I just primed it all up with some Pettit metal primer. Put some stainless clamps on the wires. Put a new piece of hose, rubber, whatever, on the uh, stop for the quadrant. And reinstalled everything. Put new flax in the stuffing box. Here's a little description and diagram of that. Because it actually will take on water in a following C. I made sure I put uh, heat shrink on the cable ends so they don't scratch me when I'm down there working and inspecting in the future. So put it all back together. Came out all right. Pleased with that. Then onto the hoses, which were not ugly or dirty at all. So I pulled them all out, which wasn't that big a deal actually. I thought it would be harder than it was. That's actually the vent hose for the tank, which was filthy. And that's just the vent. How'd they get so dirty? I'll never know. So I bought a toilet brush and some scotch brights and poured some bleach and soap down in there and scrubbed it until it was all clean. Here's a diagram of my boat with the water heater and all the associated plumbing and pumps. I changed the pump out and also put a new uh, accumulator in there which just takes the pulses out of the system. Highly recommended. Makes it quieter, makes it nicer, controls the temperature so much easier when you have hot water. It doesn't mix at different rates while you're running if you have an accumulator in there. So that alone is worth the 80 bucks or whatever it costs to put it in. I had to put it in just enough room where I had to actually shave the top of that so that the uh, board would go back over the top. But yeah, cleaned it all out, painted the whole system the hole inside of there and brand new wires, new hoses, new clamps and works like a champ. Very happy with that. I didn't put arrows on the hoses because I just do. I changed the bilge pump output and the exhaust output fitting. And then on the electrics, the distribution panel I cut a new hole in the liner there so I could put new wires in there. I fit a bus bar for the ground, a little strap to catch the door from opening too far and trashing the hinges. <laughs> and I looked online, I found these panels. They're actual breaker switches. So they're resettable, they're lit when they're on. They're made by Blue Sea Systems, but West Marine relabels them and sells them. So I cut the panel out, fit them up, and was pleased to see that yeah, they fit perfect. Even the logo still shows. And they take the stock Blue Sea Systems labels, but they're not backlit, hence the price. So I bought a little three-way LED that was red, green, or blue, depending on how you wired it up. So I wired it up green, and first choice worked great. And now I think it's time for a little break. It's Michael Caine in space. People ask me, if there's no gravity in space, how does your cocktail stay in the glass? Well, it doesn't, you see. That was Michael Caine in space. The Catalina 27s are pretty small. And the options for mounting accessories and equipment and electrics and stuff it's pretty limited. For a lot of it, the port lazarette is the best option in my opinion. The second thing to consider is do you want your boat ABYC rules compliant? The answer is yes, you do. You really do. There are lots of rules and best practices when it comes to boating. The two biggies, for me at least, are one, don't catch on fire, and two, stay away from the edges. The guidelines go a long way towards mitigating that fire thing, and I highly recommend you check them out. 
So do your homework, get familiar with them before you even start to fit or replace anything on your boat. I don't say this as, as a disclaimer, you guys do whatever you want. I'm not one of those safety lunatics who troll the comments sections of sailing channels and blogs everywhere. I say it because I want my shit to work and I want it to be robust. First off, I decided on a spot to mount two fuse holders, one for each battery. Blue Sea Systems makes some very high quality electrical components and I've never been disappointed with anything I bought made by them. They come in either two or 300 amp models. They're waterproof, they're stainless steel, and the covers hold a spare fuse, and just as importantly, at least for me, a spare screw. I made sure I could get to them quickly and easily enough when underway. Which is pretty important, I think. I bought three of these waterproof fuse holders as well. Two for the charger outputs and one for the bilge pump circuit. And uh, I mounted that one behind the panel. I mounted the charger and fuse holders and wired them in. Then I ran the two gauge anchor wire cables from the ground bus and the fuse holders to the batteries, paying close attention to the crimps and sealed them with anchor brand adhesive heat shrink. I used to think that it was, that soldering was the proper way to secure terminals. Then I read the ABYC standards and learned that if a fault occurs, it's possible for the wire to get hot enough to melt the solder and release the exposed cable, possibly contacting something that shouldn't, that whole uh, fire thing. Then I started on the AC side and replaced the shore power inlet plug with uh, one of these Marine Co ones with the square door that flips up and not one of those stainless steel ones with the round cap that always get bent and they takes 20 minutes to fit every time you leave the dock. Pain in the ass. Catalina put 12-3 wire from the shore power to the breaker and it should be 10-3 and then 12-3 from the breakers to the different loads. I ran some 12-3 back to the lazarette to feed the charger and the water heater. The boat came with one of these awesome Auto Helm 3000 wheel pilots. It still worked great. I'm going to keep it as a backup because I'm going to put a below deck autopilot in there. So I just wanted to service it, and just inspect, make sure it wasn't uh, had any water or rust or anything, any problems in there. So I took apart the drive unit, took all the gears apart, cleaned them up, greased them, put them back together, cleaned the brushes on the motor, which were not really very dirty. I just realized I had the wrong cord plugged into the microphone, so it was causing some noise, so sorry about that. Not sorry enough to go back and change it all, but yeah. So I finished up with the drive unit and took apart the control unit, and yeah, there's the flux gate compass thing, and everything looked pretty good. No water had ever been in there. And those two wires, those, that black and red wire, that's the output for the drive unit and one of the strands was broken and they just looked too small to me and on the other end those are totally the wrong terminals I don't know if those are original or not but it looks pretty crappy to me so I changed those wires out put the proper fittings on there, or terminals on there and put it back together <laughs> put it on the pedestal turned it on and yikes <laughs> It's louder than it was before. Like most boats this old and a lot of them that are a lot newer than this, the gel coat and the non-skid was pretty, pretty oxidized up. I tried polishing it and waxing it and it didn't come out very nice at all. So I figured let me try something else and I bought one of these. It's a nylon with some abrasive in the strands there. It's kind of cone shaped and very gently I did all the non-skid surfaces with that and some soapy water and yeah came out nice. Then I bought a sander and some 800 grit sandpaper from sanding discs, wet dry sanding discs so 800, 1500, 3000 grit and all the flat parts of the boat uh, 
uh, I hit with the sander three times and it came out pretty nice. So I taped off the non-skid and put some of this Pledge floor finish. It's an acrylic floor finish. It used to be called Future when I was a kid and I know it never yellows because I used to play with it all the time and thought it was really cool. So I put that on the non-skid because you can put like eight coats on and still be able to take it off with some soapy water and some ammonia but if you don't hit it with ammonia it doesn't come off it just cleans and it comes out like that and then I hand polished all the flat gel coat pieces parts of the boat hull and everything with the 3M restore wax stuff came out brilliant and about three four weeks later the boat was pretty dusty and dirty and I just hosed it off and that's how clean it came with just a hose it's like wow perfect here's the hole when I first got the boat I put some Mary Kate on and off on it and that got the stains off before I sanded it down here's a section that's been sanded and the, the other section in the back that has not so that's quite a big difference and yeah came out brilliant it's like brand new it's freaking beautiful many many months later though I stripped off the acrylic from a section of the non-skid to try this stuff that I found because you would never have to strip it you could just keep reapplying it so I gave it a go and yeah check my previous video on my product review of this stuff and that pretty much brings us up to date Big shout out to Mr. Beast Burgers for fueling some of this madness. And I'd like to thank all my patrons at Patreon for all your support. And here's your names in the credits, as promised. Like, comment, subscribe. And next week, I start on the interior. See you then. Bye.